You're watching Strategic News International. I'm Amitabh Revi and we're coming to you from Amritsar. It's the 550th birth anniversary of Guru Nanak and that is coinciding with the opening of the Kartarpur Corridor. There are um, hundreds of Indian origin Sikhs who have uh, come in from all over the world and representing three different countries apart from their Indian roots from Canada, from the UK and from Germany. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. Jagdish Singh Rewal, if I can come to you, I'm being slightly biased because you're also a media person. But uh, apart from that, uh, you have a, a huge thriving business in Canada and you have also uh, fought elections to be an MP. How important is this coming more than 70 years after uh, the partition? It's, it's very, very important. Uh, it gives... Uh, uh, it give a very uh, good feeling to all the uh, Sikhs who are living abroad. And th th there's been a talk of this uh, year all over, that Kartarpur Corridor is opening and um, the both governments are uh, working on it and they're getting it done. And this is how they're celebrating the 550th anniversary of Guru Nanak. So people are really excited uh, all over in Canada. Dr. Saab. Now, you are going to be one of the fortunate ones who will be part of the first Jatha when the corridor opens. You have a whole history of uh, your roots in this land and connected to the whole history of what's happening. Describe to us the emotions that are going through you. Well, I think it's, a, it's an extraordinary uh, um, time that even 550 years after his birth, Guru Nanak's impact is so influential in that the two countries who are in so much tension with each other, but there is Guru Nanak and they are willing to forget everything and people are going to cross the border to the other side and we can have calm for some day. And, 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 I, and I hope that message will percolate deeper and deeper. So, as a Sikh, I feel very proud uh, that uh, Guru Nanak has brought so much, uh, has had so much influence uh, this year, not only here, but around the world as well. Guru Deep Singh and Nawaji, uh, like Dr. Saab is pointing out here, not only Guru Nanak's life, but even in his death, and now, post that 550 years after uh, his birth, he continues to bring communities and societies together. Yes. If we look at what's happening uh, here uh, in the Qatarpur corridor with both India and Pakistan. Uh, I would like to say only one thing that uh, up, uh, as the last 12 months, nobody was even believing this, that uh, this corridor could be opened because of the lo long tension with the Kashmir borders and uh, other territory. This was not possible, but uh, it, the both side governments, they made it possible. I think this is very positive for them and, and in the interest of uh, the state of Punjab and for the country. But I, I would like to say only add one thing, that uh, by the 550th uh, Guru Prabhu of Guru Nanak Dev Ji. This is the same story you can just see when the Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Jyoti Josumai, when, when they just uh, left this Jamma, that time, this was the same tension there. Hindus, they were claiming that is our Guru, and Muslims, they were claiming this is our uh, uh, Haji RP. See, why this why Guru Nanak is common? Guru Nanak is common for everyone and Guru Nanak is common for all humanity. We are saying, but we are today, we must be good tomorrow. And with this principle, Guru Nanak teaches us and Guru Nanak teaches the word. That's why wherever we are going, even you have seen that, uh, that uh, with this Guru Nanak Nima Sikh. What is Sikh? Sikh is a student. Hindi, we can say it Shishya. And Punjabi, we say it Sikh. And we follow the on, uh, only, but the Guru Nanak's the teachings, and due to that, we are progressing every part of the world. 
but doubt okay we feel sometimes the discrimination in in many fields here and everywhere this is everywhere is common but if you continue with the same teachings one day you just achieve you come to on that level where you can see that yes this is the right way to live and to teach the others existing rival now the message that guru nanak has had is will be there for time immemorial but when you look at realistically what is happening india pakistan tensions in india and pakistan not talking to each other the leaders are not talking this problem uh, kashmir various other things this seems to be the only exception where both countries have actually agreed over time and finally it has happened do you see it optimistically or do you also look at it in terms of maybe pakistan has another game that they are playing here as well well first of all i look at it very optimistically that uh, as it done after so many years uh, six seven doing prayers from so many years and it's finally it's been done and uh, uh, we are looking at it uh, very optimistically that this has been done but what is uh, uh, behind the curtain what pakistan is doing what is their tension from this that i can't tell you much because i'm not into that side and what i'm what i'm listening from the news what you're listening from the news so i can't get into that much but uh, this has been a great opportunity for all six living abroad and all over this is a great opportunity that yes we can cross the line and we can go and uh, do our prayers there uh sometimes i just feel like that when british divided india and pakistan that the way they uh, draw that line loc and uh, why they left that <laughs> into that side this is if they had they would have little sense like how the the the, the six are coming from pakistan to this side and pakistan is muslims are moving to that side if the way the line was sense, drawn it was trees across it, continents would have been different not yeah. just in the subcontinent so, where it finally seen. that line has been opened for the six yeah. and for all, all religions anybody who wants any pilgrim it's the message of unity dr sir but again there are a lot of pessimistic voices seeing how this all has has happened from pakistan's uh, side uh, the prime minister they're claiming full credit uh, for whatever reasons politically he's having his own unity um, azadi march which he has to face which he had performed he has internal problems economic otherwise as well to have done it so fast it seems almost certain that the military and other deep state institutions were part of that and they also seems to be an agenda with the prime minister saying ki you don't need passports you don't need to pay 20 dollars you don't need that five day list but then the army and the isi is saying something else which seems to suggest that there is a deeper motive behind pakistan here trying to foment again the khalistani movement or separatism movement again how do you see it especially from your background yeah um i i see things a bit differently uh I don't think you can say Pakistan can solely take credit for this. Absolutely. Uh Prime Minister Modi is also showed uh been very magnanimous and uh, taking quite a lot of steps. And I like to think that is there's something beyond us human beings which is what uh Guru Nanak was. And however it percolates and however different people rationalize on why they are taking this step uh, but at the end result is a good one obviously there are always undercurrents going on you know there will be some people trying to take advantage of it how much they will or not i don't think the six are going to tolerate it i don't think the six will be very happy if this situation is exploited and and my feeling is that both countries uh will respect that sentiment and i i think this is something bigger than us bigger than us uh, in certain countries say the uk canada the us we've seen how this issue has been utilized mm -hmm. how is it really like in germany because yours is an exceptional story <laughs> in terms of your being elected in germany itself mm -hmm. is there any resonance like in other countries for the khalistani movement for separatism and politics being involved like it is in the us the uk 
and uh, Canada? No, I don't think so in Germany is the, this case. Because uh, first, because the we, six, uh, we were ex uh, just known everywhere in the world that uh, mostly that's the, that the, uh, this Khalistan movement, this was uh, based in Germany, especially very on, uh, on peak times. And this was known in the world that uh, most of uh, that uh, uh, from the Khalistani uh, are in Germany and they are doing activities. This is very true. This was happening. But uh, I, 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 I tell only, uh, I can say here only one thing that uh, this is uh, happened in 40 years back, yeah. almost 40 years. Uh, but in 40 years, what we have achieved, we have yeah. lost. But we, as uh, I am politician, I can say, say, I can only think like that. You know, 70 years back when the India and Pakistan was divided. You know, that time, German was also totally destroyed. The base of Germany and the base of India and Japan is uh, almost similar. Because after the Second World War, total war destroyed. And your point is, look at Germany and Japan and look at yes. where the subcontinent. And then, even there was, uh, German was divided in two parts, East Germany and West Germany. Yeah. The same is also in India. We, we are divided here also. Uh, Punjab is divided, half of state of Punjab is in Pakistan and same is Kashmir was divided and also the other, other part is the same story. Because when the partitions come, but how it was this possible for the Germans to bring them, both states together, was a really a challenge. It took so long. And at and the, in 1989, that situation of uh, uh, international politics was on that level. That's why the unification that it, it comes up. And we are really very happy and we are proud to say, because I'm a German citizen, okay, I'm born here. But uh, for that reason, I can say that I'm really proud that without any bloodshed, without any uh, uh, disturbance, East and West unifications took place. And this is really a big example and from this example we can learn also a lot. And if this type of uh, some uh, good developments are coming up, I think this is in the interest of also the reason, especially it will just reduce the tension in both countries and it will also bring the harmony in both uh, uh, communities. And this is what uh, normally, uh, but I can see this is the teaching of Guru Nanak. It's an ideal situation, but whether we will reach there. In fact, uh, since the Berlin Wall is being talked about, that it, it was mentioned specifically by, the, by Pakistan that this is something similar to that if you look forward. But then other uh, ministers have called it giving India googly. And so there's a lot of different undercurrents that you're saying that you didn't really know too much about, so you didn't want to talk about it. But tell us more about Canada now. Mm -hmm. Why does it surface? so often in terms of separatism or the politicians, mainstream politicians, you're talking about even the current Prime Minister Trudeau whose the perception is uses these sentiments or is forced to use them to get votes. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I have seen uh, being in the media from past 20 years, I have seen the way they have started this moment, right? I'm not, I don't know much after 1984 but I start following it after 2002. So I've seen the way uh, their movement have grown. So uh, like they first started that they want to uh, work on the human rights issues. They want to uh, work to uh, give justice to the victims of the 1984. But they started all that by respecting the, the Prabhu Sata of India and we're going to uh, help all the victims of the uh, 1984 for their rehabilitations and uh, 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 to uh, get them to justice, right? But later on, their thoughts and their, the way they were working on it, it's been keep on changing and changing and then they start talking about the sovereignty and then they start talking about the referendum. So that this is how it's been changing. But so, is it an independent view among uh, Sikhs there or is it being fueled by somebody else, by Pakistan? 
Well, I, if the Pakistan is fueled by the Pakistan, I don't know, but I have been asking these separate people who demand the Khalistan that when they talk about the boundaries of the Khalistan, I do ask them that Sikh Raj was even in Pakistan, and why don't you include the uh, Nankana Saab, Kartarpur Saab, and Lahore in it? Yeah. Then they avoid it. Then they don't talk about it. Then they don't, don't say about it. Then they say, no, first we got to... Why do Lahore? Then the go all the way to Afghanistan, to <laughs> Kabul. And Wherever the Sikh Raj was. So that tells you the tension, like they want to have the Khalistan here in Punjab, not in, the, in any part of the Pakistan, and they don't want to say anything that they want to have uh, any part of Pakistan involved in our, our Khalistan. So that clears their attention uh, to us. So um, talking about Prime Minister Trudeau, talking about the Harper, or talking about the Andrew Scheer, yeah. uh, they win always. They are very, uh, they try to very politically correct on this issue that uh, under the freedom of expressions or mm. uh, as long as they're demanding the Khalistan uh, peacefully, we can't do anything and this is their right that they can demand for the Khalistan. Yeah. But if there's any violent act happen, then yes, then they will take an action on it. So there's a large number of people who are for this moment in Canada, it's live in Canada. Another thing is uh, where we got to divide this. There's the sentiments of the Sikh community living abroad about the 1984, about the attack on the Golden Temple, about what happened in 1984 after Indira Gandhi's assassinations, right? Yeah. They are emotionally attached to that. Sometimes those emotions get exploited, right? So, like, this, this six uh, whose emotions are with that 1984, who have the sympathy for the victims of the 1984 or who condemns the 1984 attack on the Golden Temple, they should not be taken as they are Khalistanis. That's where you gotta, uh, you gotta separate them. And there's the people, yes, they demand the Khalistan, and then there are people who are uh, not happy with the government's action or not happy with the the massacre that happened in 1984. So those uh, emotions should not be exploited or should not be mixed with the demand of the Khalistan. Dr. Sam, in the UK now and especially in your past now, you've been president, if I'm not wrong, of an organization that is banned. Uh, you're referring to an organization which is now claiming to have uh, roots all over uh, the world which is also banned in India this year, which is looking for that referendum. In the UK, is politics, mainstream politics, still being used in, to divide people? I mean, again, there's a Pakistani element where you're talking about the mayor of London, why are there protests against uh, outside the Indian High Commission? Is it a large number? Who is it sponsoring it? Who is bringing it? That division, instead of the message like we're talking about, that we should be talking now, is about unity. Yeah. What is it like in the UK? Um, well, I, I think you find uh, London has always been, not just this year, not the last 10 years, but 100 years, it's uh, uh, always remember a conference in which somebody said, even the independent struggle of, for India was started in the playing fields of Eton. Yeah. So London has always been a hot pot of things like that. It's been a melting pot of quite a lot of, not just uh, issues in India, Pakistan, but all over the world, there are demonstrations, etc. There is a very high tolerance for those sort of things there, and Hyde Park is famous for that. But, you know, I, I, I think if there is tension in the family, you can't blame the neighbors for taking advantage of it. See, Prime Minister Modi came to London in 2015. I was approached by the PMO's office two, three years before that, to be an interlocutor between the government of India and the underground movements, whether there is a possibility of a dialogue and peace. And you have mentioned that itself was a major change. You, you, yes. you thought it was Yes, I, 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 I uh, suggested uh, five, five steps, which uh, I have to give credit to Prime Minister Modi. He agreed and he expressed them in London. Mm -hmm. And that has brought a huge amount of change in UK. And I, I think your uh, High Commission there will say as well, will attest to this. The first one was uh, 
the bringing down to the blacklist, which we, we said, well, we shouldn't really stop people going back to their homeland and to Darbar Sam. Uh, Prime Minister Modi actually brought uh, 30 people were removed in that weekend. And then I think we've seen now the latest statement, most of them are have been removed. There's some officials in some of the embassies and high commission outside who are still creating problems, but from the center everything is finished. Then the second was the release of political prisoners. Uh, that process has also been going, and I, I understand that uh, most of them are going to be released in the next few months, and I hope that process uh, By political comes to prisoners, an end. you mean people who have uh, served out their sentence? Yeah, they've served yet. their sentences, and uh, still in they've jail. been. They, once you've served your sentence and you're staying in prison, then you essentially are because of politics, not because uh, you are a threat to society. And uh, so they, they, they are being released. Some of them have been released. Uh, announcements have been made. The third was which uh, I was quite um, quite taken back, and Prime Minister Modi uh, and his staff said that they will be willing to make an apology to the worldwide Sikh community for the attack on Sidi Darbar Sahib. Uh, the way I see the Khalistan issue is quite simply, in very simple terms, is this. Sidi Darbar Sahib is the center, is the, the most sacred place of the Sikhs. It was entrusted to India, and the Indian army attacked it. Okay? And this, what, when, when that happened, whatever the reasons, whatever, uh, when that happened, the normal reaction was, well, we create our own state to protect it. Okay? Now, that, in and that is, a, it's a very, it's a small issue, and, uh, and, and when it was put in that way, uh, the government has uh, accepted that uh, Siri Darbar Sahib, Siri Kalthik Sahib supremacy, where there will be no political or legal shadow over it, uh, will have to be reinstated so the worldwide Sikh community uh, can uh, uh, can, in, uh, can can interact with the Syria Kaltik Sub and the appointment of the Jatida yeah. because whatever happened, whatever is spoken or decisions made at the Kaltik affect me as a British citizen Sikh, affect him as a Canadian citizen Sikh and affect the Indian citizen Sikhs. It's not just about Amritsar, not about Punjab. Uh, STPC might be, but not Syria Kaltik Sub. And the fifth uh, and then, um, uh, part of that uh, uh, sort of dialogue process was that there would be a open-ended dialogue with the representatives of the movement, okay, not six in general, of the movement, uh, open-ended dialogue, and so that if they can come to a, uh, a good sort of happy ending, good. And if not, well, that's uh, so. Th that was my uh, my contribution to it. And I have to say, Prime Minister Modi was the first Indian leader since 1984 who understood, took the trouble to understand, and gave a commitment that, yes, uh, it's a sort of a, a different sort of garvapsi, bring the, uh, the dissenters back home into the, into the fold. So if you feel, end the distension, end the dissension, and it is not a threat to the country, uh, it's a, these are cultural things, religious things, misunderstandings, whatever the governments in the past did. Finish it, move on. Like you're saying, if you end or bring a closure, we're also talking now about a new beginning, which is yeah. happening right now. So if those two actually can intermesh, uh, who knows what might happen in history. Yeah. Dr. Saab, thank you so much uh, for speaking much. to us. Thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you. For being. Thanks.